Hello, everyone. For our final project topic will be the MBA network analysis, and we want to figure out the best way to represent a network. We will utilize graph stage, which is a framework that will embed those features onto each player and aggregate each team to predict whether or not they can make the playoffs. In this paper, we are investigating the social network for individual NBA players and the relationship between each team. We will try to solve how to implement graph stage to learn over the NBA players' datasets and find the correlation between the team that make the playoffs and those that do not. We will run our model across current NBA players and their season's statistic to see which team is predicted to win given their current lineup. For our current problem statement, we will be performing graph classification. And the final goal is to use team statistic or player statistic and analysis for predicting which team will make two playoffs by leveraging the player stats and the team stats from the 2015 to 2018 season to predict the probability of making the NBA playoff for each team given their roster. We mainly use three big data sets in our project. For the first CSV files, it contains all NBA player stats during 2016 to 2021 NBA season. And for the second CSV file, it contains all NBA team stats during 2016 to 2020 NBA season. And it contains the features such as team name, year, playoffs, and standing. For the standing, we have label 0 and 1, which stand for didn't make to playoff and made to playoff. For the last CSV file, it contains a, a historical account of the NBA play-by-play -play date by season. And this data set contains home players and away players' IDs, as well, as well as the time during the game, which we use to cross-reference with player stats. We have a device and algorithm that will utilize this data set to determine the total minutes that each player spent with one another. Our script will mentally script the data sets from the website and read it as a CSV file so the user don't, doesn't have to deal with the large data set. Our data set is suitable for our given application because its graph has bears and high dimensional but meaningful connection that we can compress down to a low dimensional embedding. You can see on the right, we we'll use this as player's feature vector and team's feature vector. We will also label the data point as 1 or 0 to indicate if they had made the playoff. For our graph classification network, we will have team names as our node. For each node, we will contain all the players of that team. And there are no edges between each node. But we will use the amount of playtime they are on the court together be the address of the players. When thinking of what makes an NBA team great, we look through different stats and we settle with individual points per game, assists, rebounds, field goal percentage minutes, and games played. The aggregate total of each player on the team in conjunction with the amount of time played together will help us in determining how successful a team's network of players can be. This was our initial data sets, where we collect the individual player stats and we had another with just the team, a boolean value on whether or not they made the playoffs. So for the data analysis, we revolve around cleaning and extracting the information that we want from a large play-by-play -play data set that consists of each and every NBA game in a single season. What we tried to do was to gather all the games that they participated in and analysis at what time the players sub out for one another. We create an address between every player in the lineup and adjust its weight according to the time in the game. Once we collected all edges from every game in the NBA season, we grouped the duplicate edges and summed them 
to get a total amount of playing time between each player on the team. This would represent the edges between players that we needed to create each individual team's network. This is the example figure that we did for graph classification network, which shows for win team in 2016 season. The graph will have a total 120 data point, and it contains a set of no features. For each season, we will have 30 data points, which represented by 30 teams. And we decided to use four seasons in total to do our training model. Each node will be filled with player stats as individual data points. We will use the team's name as our node. Each node will contain the players of that team, with address between players representing the amount of time they are on the call together. And on the right will be the example for whole players network in 2016. Each clamp represents a team, and nodes that are connected between multiple represent players that were traded during the season. And moving on to our method section, uh, what we will be using is GraphSage. Uh, GraphSage is an abdu inductive framework, which kind of works from like smaller communities of nodes, and it tries to like find information between each node, like through its relationship and the current network, and then sort of like uh, pass along the information and aggregate it to larger communities throughout the network. So we're kind of able to like get information from uh, basically like a subset of a graph and then kind of like spread that to other portions. So kind of learns over throughout this process again and again. And by aggregating the information across each nodes, we're kind of able to learn a little bit more about the community of nodes itself. In our case, uh, through our NBA data set, what we were doing is essentially, since we're doing graph classification, one node, such as this one, this entire circle right here, that would be considered a team from uh, whatever season or whatever year that for our data set. And then each individual smaller nodes here, that would represent each player. And then each edge in between them would, rep would be represented by the amount of time that they spend on the court together throughout the course of a season. And then they would uh, be weighted. We, we kind of know that from an NBA team, we, they have a maximum roster of, of about 15, but a majority of NBA teams, they have uh, sort of a core of like maybe five to eight players that play, uh, spend a lot of time on the court together. And as well as like, there's kind of a, not always, but there's a correlation between the amount of time that you play on the court, as well as like how good your statistics are like you know obviously the the better players have a lot more time on the court for our part of this uh method and using graph sage we wanted to hopefully find a relationship between using this unique combination of player statistics that are embedded onto each individual node as well as the having the edges weighted between every single player to player based on the amount of time that they spend together and what we hope to accomplish from this was to aggregate all of its information. So we kind of learn more about the team in general and like through working through its network and passing its information, like from player to player or through each edge indicating the amount of time they spent together. We're hoping that this unique combination teaches us and learns more about certain like statistics and uh, specif specific aspects of teams that make them uh, worthy of being a playoff team or not. So what we did for the play-by-play -play data set was we kind of, we filtered out by the team that we're currently looking for. And then for every ID where we're looking at the home description or the away description, and then we're checking at every, at every increment where there's a sub, we would get all the five players that were on the court, create an edge in between each of those five players. And then we would do that over like all 82 games of an entire season for a team. And then at the end of it, we would just have an edge between each player on the team and the total amount of time that they spent on the court together. And then that would be kind of like our feature value, feature information from the graph. And then we would predict a one or a zero, whether or not they made the playoffs or not. Um, this is a loss function, the sources from um, this description as well. Uh, as previously mentioned, what our model is doing is a graph classification. So we have kind of like, kind of like a graph of graphs, as you will. There's like about 
30 nodes per NBA season, which corresponded to each NBA team. And then there's around 15 to 20 players for every team itself. So then one single team node will represent basically the 15 to 20 players that we have. And that would be what we have as our input. Our feature matrix is like a 15 by 15 player, player by player matrix. And then each of the nodes itself would have their statistics embedded upon it. And that's what we would pass throughout this model. And then in the end, what we would output would be either a one or a zero uh, to indicate whether or not they made the playoffs. So for our conclusion and improvements for our accuracy, we were able to obtain a 60% test accuracy over about a, a high parameter. Our parameters chosen for the number of epics is uh, 200. And we know that's not that high, but we believe that this is a very good starting point and could be sort of as like a proof of concept for like being able to create a network between things that like are not necessarily seen. Um, so like for our case, it was like the data set, the play-by-play -play data set. Uh, we just really wanted to figure out a way to represent a team as like sort of a, um, a, a graph to be able to learn over the entire network itself because we don't want to lose any of that information. And we thought that the having the edges weighted between each player was a very smart idea just because we, as I previously mentioned, like the core players on a the team, they would kind of like stand out more when it comes to the training because they're maybe their statistics embedded or have like a heavier emphasis on it just because their edges to surrounding players are a lot, a lot heavier. Um, so improvements. So what we kind of came across or spent a lot of our time doing this quarter was dealing with our data from 834.com. Um, although it was like a great data set for a like the box score and a play-by-play, -play, it proved to be really messy. And we found out we found that out throughout the course of the weeks. Uh, like for example, we had like they would have a label for home and away teams, and then the home player IDs and the away player IDs wouldn't correspond. So it would say like the home team is like the Atlanta Hawks, but then when we look at the away or the home uh, player ID, it would be a team from like, I don't know, like another team, like say the Golden State Warriors. And it was like these small little things that we had to uh, keep finding throughout our training and cleaning process, which was um, a bit a bit tough to deal with. And then another thing would be cross-referencing between two sources. So as I mentioned, there was like the home player IDs. And what we would have to do is kind of map between uh, all the players and then uh, create those edges in between them but there'd be names that have like a special character that sits in between um, like the letters and stuff and that would be uh, very tedious to deal with so we kind of we had to find these out manually and uh, one by one so these are the sort of improvements that we could uh, that we found within the data that could definitely be improved upon and then for the pooling aggregator itself so Right now, uh, how our team node is kind of represented is like a 15 by 15 matrix. And although that's like that's like a pretty good way to have it is not necessarily what we wanted um, as our end goal. So what this mean pooling aggregator would do is kind of, it would compress and average out the statistics of a like 15 by 15 player matrix into a one by one by 15, uh, like vector that would basically like aggregate the statistics, average out the statistics between each players, as well as find like a unique representation for the player edges, the weighted edges in between them. So that was something that we weren't able to implement um, towards the end, but that is definitely something that we believe will heavily improve our model and our hypothesis itself. Creating the edges in between each player uh, proved to be a really good proof of concept. You know, creating in creating a network and uh, player edges through like feature engineering and then finding this data ourselves. So here's the references we use for our project, and thank you for listening.